Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, we'll do a small exercise which is going to be an infinite scroll demo app. So this is the 54th video of our JavaScript tutorial series. So let me show you the demo for the app before we quickly start coding it. Now here you can see that once we scrolled to the end of the page, we are requesting for more posts from the backend API. And you can see we are now loading the next four posts, which is 5, 6, 7, 8. And we do have the previous posts preserved with us which you can see here. So we are loading the posts only when we are at the bottom of the page and not unnecessarily. So this is the demo application that we will be making in this video. And for styling, I will be using tail blocks. So I will be using the blog layout. We will be using this template for laying down the UI of our application. So I can click on view code and let us select all of this. So I will copy to clipboard. So let us go back to our Visual Studio code and start to code this out. So right here, I've already included the links for the CDNs. First is the Tailwind CSS. So we are using the version 1.4.6 and the end progress CSS, which will be used for the loaders that we are using, the JavaScript file for end progress, and then some styles for the end progress bar. So you can find these links in the course files. So the link for the course files can be found down below. So now let us include the script app.js and let us go to app.js and start coding our application so i will first register an event listener on the window object so window dot add event listener and i will listen for the tom content loaded event and once that happens i will run the function initialize app so right here let us define the initialize app function so function initialize app and i will set up the references to dom elements so right here i will invoke the set references function that i will define in just a minute but before that let us declare some variables so right here let us define a container variable that will hold the reference to the dom element which in our case is the container which holds all the posts that we are going to fetch from the fake json api Next, let us define a limit variable and what it does is that in one async call, it will make sure to fetch one batch of posts. So each batch of posts will have four posts rendered on a single page. So I'll set the limit to four. So now let us set up a page variable and I will set that to one. So the current page will be one. As you will ask for the next batch of four posts, we will move to the next page where we render the new coming batch of posts from the API. So right here, let us define the set references function. And let us reach out to the DOM to grab a reference to our container that will hold all the posts that we get from the backend API. So container document query selector, and I will grab the container by its class. So right down here, let us perform event bindings on the references to DOM elements that we just got. So for that, I will define a do event bindings function. And right here, let us define that do event bindings. For now, let us make a simple log to the console. Console.log do event bindings. So let us go back to the browser to see what we get. You can see we are getting two event bindings being logged to the terminal. Now before uh, defining a function for rendering the UI for the posts that we are getting from the server, let us paste uh, the code that we copied from the tail blocks right here. And let's see how this looks. So currently we are having a static page. Let us uh, make it a bit dynamic. So, so let us go back to our Visual Studio code and write inside the app.js. And right after the do event bindings function, let us define a function render UI. So right here, let us define the function render UI. And what we will do in this function is that we will prepare some HTML for the posts that we will fetch from the API in just a minute. So right here, I will decorate my function with the async keyword. And let us fetch the post from the API. So for that, I will use the await keyword and I will define a function fetch post in just a minute and we expect to get some posts from this function 
that will reach out to the server and grab those posts for us so right here let us define the function fetch posts and what it will do is from inside this function is that we will reach out to the API and fetch a batch of posts defined by the limit for each page as and when required when the complete scroll for a batch is done we will fetch the posts for the second batch and so on so let us decorate this function with async keyword as well and I will make a fetch call to the API and let us use our fake JSON API to fetch the posts and I will use the query parameters here to specify a limit like this so fetch https json placeholder dot type dot com slash post and then I will use the query params so limit and set that to limit variable and underscore page set that to page variable so we are passing the limit for the number of posts that we want to get for each page and the page for which we want the batch of posts so right here at this line we are maintaining a pause to get the response from the server so I can say const response and store this promise right inside here so right here let us pass the JSON that we get back using the JSON method on the response that we get back so const post and I will again use the await keyword response.json finally let us return the list of posts that we caught from the API to the render UI function that will render them to the DOM like this so now we have the posts with us on line 18 let us log them to the console and go back to the browser to see what we get so let us inspect and you can see we are getting the list of posts from the backend API where each post has a body property, an ID property, a title property and a user ID property. So now we have the posts with us. So let us map over the posts that we get from the fetch posts function and paste the markup that we got from tail blocks. So right here I will prepare some HTML, const HTML posts dot map for each post that we are having in the list of posts that we got from the API I will return some markup for each post and let us use the markup that we got from tail blocks so let us collect the markup for the single post that we are going to render so right here let us remove this div and let us grab this out and go back to our app.js file and paste the markup here okay so this is the entire markup that we are getting for a single post and we'll prepare the HTML for the entire post collection that we're getting from the API and we'll render that inside the container so right here for each post let us go right here and since we're using backticks I can interpolate the post variable and access the ID property on it and let us change this to post or title so this h2 post post or title and this paragraph tag to post dot body let us convert this list of markup for our posts to a string so I can use the join method as a separator I will use single quotes so right inside the container let us grab the first element child so container dot first element child and the first element child is this div so container is basically this div if I say first element child of the container then that is this div and then I want to insert adjacent HTML and right before the end of the first element child div let us render our HTML right there so we are grabbing the first element child which is our flex container and in that we are adding the prepared HTML right within the flex container so for that I'm using the insert adjacent HTML method and we are passing on the HTML that we prepared so let us go back to the browser to see what we get and you can see we are getting the entire markup being rendered and here we are getting our post ID 
the post title and the post body for each of our posts that we got from the backend API. So rendering our UI is now done. So now we are successfully fetching all the posts. So now we are successfully fetching all the posts from the API and rendering them to the DOM. Let us again register an event listener on the window object and this time I will listen for the scroll event. So I can say window dot add event listener scroll and once that happens let us trigger the function handle complete content scroll so right here let us define the function handle complete content scroll and let us pull out the inner height and the scroll by from the window object so inner height which gives us the height or the content area which i discussed in the video on window object so if you are not aware of the concept of inner height and in general the window object the link for the video on window object and page redirection methods can be found down below this video and then we have the scroll by property on the window object so let us get that from the window object so here i am using destructuring to pull out these properties from the window object and if i talk about scroll by it returns us the number of pixels that the document is currently scrolled vertically. Next let us pull out the scroll height from the document.body. So I will again use destructuring here. So const scroll height and I will pull that from document.body. Next we need to add a simple conditional check to see whether we have reached to the bottom of the page or not. So for that I can say if inner height plus so if the height of our content area plus the number of pixels that the document is currently scrolled vertically if the entire height that we get by summing these two variables is greater than equal exceed the scroll height this means that we are at the bottom of the page and at this point of time we can set the loading of the progress bar to simulate that we are going to fetch the next batch of posts. So let us make a simple log here. Console.log we are at the bottom of the page. And let us go back to the browser to see what we get. So let us scroll over the entire page and you can see we are getting we are at the bottom of the page getting logged to the terminal. So right here what I want to do is I want to start fetching of the next posts or the next batch of posts so for that we can set our loading first and then fetch the next batch of posts from the api and for loading bars we are using end progress so let us go right below the lock and let us define a new function and i will name it as set loading of progress bar and right here you can see that we are having the styles for our progress bar so we'll render that in our ui so right here let us define the set loading of progress bar function so function set loading of progress bar and let us set up the loader using end progress and as the very first step let us initiate the loading progress of our end progress loader by saying end progress dot start then let us define a set timeout function and let us simulate a delay of one second so set timeout and let us pass the timeout of one second and right within the callback function of the set timeout function let us increment the page by one so once we have fetched the first batch of posts we will initiate the loading of progress bar to simulate a delay and informing the user that now we are going to fetch the next batch of posts for the next page which is page 2 because here we are incrementing the page and once we reach the bottom of that page we'll again set a loading of progress bar and increment the page and so on and then once we have incremented the page variable let us call the render ui function where we will again fetch the next batch of posts for the current page that we get right after this operation and render that to the dom so render ui and once we are done with rendering the ui for the next batch of posts we can terminate our progress bar so right here i can say end progress 
dot done so let us go back to the browser to see what we get so right here if i scroll to the bottom of the page you can see the loader did run okay so there is one mistake right here this should be scroll by and let's go back to the browser to see what we get so right here we are getting the first batch of posts from the api let us scroll the page down now we are at the bottom of the page we initiated the loading for the progress bar to simulate a delay within which we'll fetch the next batch of posts so right here you can see we are fetching the next batch of posts so five six seven eight we are again at the bottom of our page and then we again fetched the next batch of posts 9 10 11 12 and so on so this was all about the video on infinite scroll demo app where we learn how we can load more data on reaching to the bottom of the page when required and not upfront so if you like the video do give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon to get the notification for all the upcoming uploads and i will see you guys in the very next one